I've been dreaming of giving this speech for quite some time. This date is really special to me. Exactly 10 years ago, I sat at a real graduation, one where I was able to sit closer than six feet to my classmates with a large crowd behind me. I was 22 years old at the time, graduating from Holy Cross in Worcester, Mass, with a degree in economics. I even had a job lined up immediately after graduation. This all sounds great on the surface, but it really wasn't. I was actually going through a manic episode at the time. I was up for five days in a row. I thought I had come up with a revolutionary company that would change the world overnight. I did a lot of embarrassing things during that week. With the help of my family, my friends, and medical professionals, I ended up in a psychiatric ward where I spent the next five days in a locked facility. When I was in the hospital, I thought the worst part was going to be being there. But I realized leaving was much more challenging. I didn't have anyone to talk to about my mental illness. I didn't have anyone to relate to. I felt as though bipolar disorder defined me. I thought I was always going to be labeled a loser, not worthy of love, not capable of success. I don't know how many of you will end up in a psychiatric ward, but adversity is not unique to me. We have all faced some kind of challenge over the last year. Whether it's isolation from the coronavirus, frustrations with race relations here in America, or feeling inadequate when we apply and pursue residency. But I also think adversity doesn't have to be bad. The best way to endure this adversity is to find purpose. I did this through finding the ability to pause. Through my meditation, I thought about what my future would bring. I thought about how it's very likely my future children will also have bipolar disorder. What kind of world did I want them to grow up in? That same question led me to medical school and in front of you today. I ask you to ask yourself a similar question. How can you hone this incredible responsibility and influence as physicians to positively impact the world? As osteopaths, we've learned that the body is capable of healing itself and all the organs are interrelated. I also like to think all organs function somewhat similarly. While each organ in the brain has its own function, they're all capable of functioning the same way. For instance, when I go to the gym, lift weights, muscle fibers are torn. With proper nutrients, hydration, and sleep, the muscle grows back stronger. I like to think of, of adversity's impact on the brain as the same way. With proper sleep, nutrients, and hydration, it can grow back stronger. But the most important nutrient for the brain is quite different. Human connection. Humans are not meant to be alone. Through the influence of a community, a conversation with a friend, a hug with a loved one, your brain is capable of growing through adversity. Over the past 10 years, I've been on a journey from one side of the psych ward to the other, and I could have never done this alone. Thank you.